Good morning. Happy Christmas Day. Thank you guys for the introduction. That's what today was. I want to get everybody part and get ready because it's Christmas Eve. Jesus is coming tonight. Well, actually, he did that 2,000 years ago, but we're going to pretend like he's on his way again. It is so wonderful to be here, and I know if you're like me, you've been running and rushing and cooking and all the things that we do before a holiday, and the day is here. This is what all the season has been about, and um, we get to celebrate this all day. We're lucky Christmas Eve is falling on a Sunday, so we just get we just get to worship Jesus all day long. And for those of you that are joining us online, we thank you and appreciate you, and if you are the one that put a gift in our um, prayer box and you're listening we are very thankful for that that was very kind not necessary but very kind uh, if you are a first time listener if you would just um, write in where you're from and how we best can pray for you because we we take praying serious out here in the village there's not there's we're, we're not high steeple but we're big hearted so please please uh, let us know how we can pray for you and if you watch this later and it's not live just send a message through facebook and we'll get it and we'll get the prayer team on it um having said that are there any prayer requests praise reports that we want to lift up this morning i want to lift up my friend leanne uh randy buckle's wife um, she is still, she, she's going through her third bout of cancer, and I, I lifted her up a few weeks ago. But um, if, if y'all could just keep Leanne in your prayers, um, I, I would appreciate it. Did Zeb get all good reports last week? I think they went to the doctor at least once a day every day last week. <laughs> he kept her busy last week. We, we're, uh, tell Zeb that, that he's got to start paying you overtime. And, and, and I've already talked to our, our treasurer about paying you overtime. And so you're just going to be so rich by Easter when we get all this overtime paid for you. Uh, I get help at night. Oh, okay. All right. As long as she's getting help at night. Um, are there um, anything, is there any announcements or anything, David? I want to let uh, uh, two young boys know and Clifton and Dane Hill, both in the hospital with pretty serious issues going on. We've been praying for Noah. Noah is the little boy of one of the girls that was in my Bible study group when she was in high school and um, he he was born with many difficulties and he one of those was respiratory and now he's in the hospital is this week two I think this is week two he's been in the hospital with breathing issues he, it, it's it's pretty bad it's pretty bad and um, of course, a young mom and a young dad um, out of town. They're from Concord, but they're living in Chapel Hill right now. And so they're they're up in Boston. Isn't that where they are with him? I think they're up in Boston with him. But anyway, that could be wrong. But God knows where they are, and he knows what they need. But Noah and then Dane uh, is in the hospital. Any? Brenner's coming up. So, I just know they're doing a test on him and he's got a fever, he's got uh, some difficult, other difficulties. I think he's having some respiratory issues, isn't he? So, two little children should not be in the hospital on Christmas Eve. And in no way to diminish the seriousness of that announcement, how neat it is to have a talking Christmas tree. <laughs> Yes, yes, we, uh, we we did that for all of our special guests, and you just gave away the secret. But uh, yes, we do have a talking Christmas tree over here, and and it also prays very hard. It, it's a, it's it is it, it it it's 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 very very uh, faithful to prayer. So, mm -hmm. so uh, okay. Well, if I've got a few prayer requests out of the prayer box, it was stuffed this morning. 
Um, <clears throat> please pray, please make me, oh, please make me and my boyfriend last a long time. Please, God, uh, I love you and God. Pray for my sister. She's 20 years old and she's got a baby boy in her belly and I want it to be healthy and safe. And isn't that what we all want is the newborns to be born healthy and safe. Please make my mom feel better. She's really bad sick and not getting any better. And we hate to get prayer requests like this right at Christmas. Um, but then we did get a Christmas gift, as I said. And I want to lift up the six uh, persons in the Alvarado family. Um, they had a, a rolled up monetary gift in, in the prayer box for us. And, and I thought that was pretty sweet. So I, we will put all of these in and remember them in our prayers today. And I need a hymn book. Right there. That's my hymn book beside of you. You can't have my hymn book. I got it all marked up. If you are able, will you stand and let us call ourselves to worship? <clears throat> Receive God's promise of love from Psalm 36. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great sea. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. And you give them drink from the river of your delight. Let us pray. Loving God, you demonstrated your love for us when you gave us your heavenly throne to become one of us. In this, while we were still sinners, you died for us. Help us to remain in your love. Help us to do everything in love as we live by faith in the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself. 
for us. Remind us, Lord, that it's all about the cross. Amen. it slower as I'm climbing up the stairs so I can stay vertical versus last week as I fell and, and if you haven't seen it and you really need a good laugh you really need to watch the first 30 seconds of service last week because the whole service didn't get on until Lamar and David got it on and when they got it on I turned around and promptly fell down and the back end is sticking straight up in the camera. I mean it is a comedy of all comedies. So at any rate, I, I am going to walk slower and watch where I'm stepping today so we can make, I, I did, Jane, I did find a big bruise on my knee. So yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she, she, she was worried about if I broke anything, but I didn't break anything, but I did get a little bruised up. Uh, <clears throat> I think there were a few angels sitting around me, hold, holding me and protecting me. Let us go to God in prayer. Oh, Father God, we just love you so much, but we are so thankful you love us. And we thank you for the joy of laughter. Even when the preacher is falling down in the church, you, I know, picked up my hand and picked me up 
And the first thing that I saw was laughter in the congregation, and that was just beautiful. Lord, we just, we, we are probably all a little bit tired and a little bit giddy because this week is can get stressful and you know that and we know you've been with us keeping us um, on point the main thing is father in this advent season this fourth sunday of the six weeks of advent our hopes our wishes our joys they have all come about in in the form of a little baby and, and this was not quite what, what the, the early Christians were looking for, or what the Jews were looking for. It was so much better. It was so much better because Jesus, he came and he was born just like us. And he, he cried just like us. And he hurt just like us. And, and, and he just he grew up with a mom and dad that had to take care of his skint knees when he fell down. He became one of us because he loved us so much. And God, we thank you for allowing him to come and teach us how to love you better and how to love one another better. And God, I ask that, that we take these gifts of Christmas, the gift of joy and peace and hope and love, that we take these throughout the season, throughout the rest of the year, and we are able to share these gifts with others so that they will want to know where, where do you get your strength? Because everybody in here has a story, and everybody listening to my voice has a story. And every one of us have had times that, that we would just have assumed walked away because we didn't see ourselves getting anywhere with it. Or we just thought we were so much smarter than any religion could, could come about. Many of us, we all have been through our teenage years when we're just dumber than stupid. And, and I, I know that we all had a moment that you were not the most important part of our life. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive us for that. And I ask you to help us to, to um, show others just how important you are. Just how we cannot get through life without you. Even when we have put you aside, you promised you would never leave us and that you would always love us. And for me, that is the best gift of Christmas, is knowing there's nothing I could ever say or do that will make you stop loving me. And that is huge. And there's a lot of people that have never felt that kind of love, Lord. And so I ask you to help us to share that gift with others. Help us to be kinder and gentler people. Help us to reach out to the least and to the lost and to those that have not heard your name in a kind and gentle way. Help us to remember the homebound that are lonely, that, that would like to be sitting here with us. Help us to find a way during the rest of this Advent season to let someone know they're loved and they're loved by you and they're loved by God's people. <clears throat> God, this is my Christmas prayer that we will carry the gifts of Christmas with us for you and for your glory. And all of your children come together with the most beautiful and perfect prayer that your son taught us while he was here. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy
God, open our hearts and touch us in a way that we will joyfully give back to you what is already yours. Amen.
service and welcoming in this this newborn babe that has come to set us all free. And I hope you will be able to join us. I have uh, I've heard some from your family wanted to know what time we were coming tonight. So uh, I hope I hope we'll have some of the Brown. It is the Brown family, right? The Hedrick Brown family. <laughs> so. Um, I'm sorry. Some, some are clients, some are brown. Okay. Well, I just really know Phil's best. So <laughs> anyway, um, eat your dinner early and come join us or save it and have dinner at 7. Uh, we did vote to have... Um, our candlelight service is six because it'll still be dark out and and then it won't be too late everybody getting home so i hope that you'll all be able to come back tonight um, our scripture comes from john um, the uh, first chapter verse 14 and the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son full of grace and truth will you pray with me and for me father god we ask that you anoint this time of worship that we are in we ask that you anoint the words, the music, the prayers. Anoint all of these hearts. Father, may all of our mind thoughts be set on things of you that are pure and lovely. And may all the words that we say be be uh, blessed upon you and pleasing to your ear. These things we ask in your precious Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Don and Mac just explained to us how love came down at Christmas. And I love that song, Love Came Down at Christmas. We say it, we sing it, but sometimes I wonder, do we always believe it? Or do we sometimes put it on the back shelf? Because sometimes I think we don't always live it. We all have moments in our life that we, we're not, we're just kind of hoping Jesus is not looking at us, but, but he excuses that. He excuses it. The question is, do others know why this baby was ordained to come to earth the way he did and when he did and how he did? Do, do, do we do others outside of this room and outside of my voice do they understand these gifts that he came with when he came down from heaven he may have come as a baby boy but he packed a powerful punch we just lit the fourth candle on our beautiful advent wreath and for all of you for the past four weeks that have had anything to do with this beautiful wreath, please know that I and others appreciate it because it, it is beautiful. Um, but, but this is the candle of love. And I think love, sometimes, if I were to ask you to write down a definition of love, who could do that? I think love is one of the hardest words in language, not just English language, but in language to understand because it, it means so many different things. But this love of this candle that was just lit for us, this love was the realest love ever and none of us can have that real kind of love without the baby you see God loved us before our parents fell in love with each other to create us and because he loved us so much God made a promise way, way back in the day. He made it to Abraham. He made it to Moses. He made it to Noah. He made this promise over and over and over again. And he has never backed out on us. He has promised us that he will never leave us. That is the promise of love. That is the promise of Christmas. 
Christmas promises all kinds of things to us. We've learned about them the past four weeks. The candle of joy and hope and peace and peace on earth and goodwill to men. We have been praying that since October 7th. Christmas is a time when everybody is supposed to just be nice. Right? Just be nice. As our mama told us, if you can't say something nice, just don't say anything. I failed on that test, by the way. Many, many times I failed on that. This is the time that families and friends come together and, and the light of the family hearth or the fireplace, and I know David's going to have ours going tonight. He's held off about as long as I think he can. The, nobody loves a fire like this man right here. And he, because he, I've got Christmas decorations around the fireplace and he has held off and let me enjoy my decorations. But you know when you're sitting around the fire and I know I know we do this at fall fires. We like those big bonfires because there's just something about a fire. It's warm and it's cozy. Just look at the candles. You quit looking at the preacher. Just look how warm and cozy. It just brings a warmth into your home, uh, the, the light of a fire. Because it, it, it will push back the darkness. Uh, I know you've been in those caves, or maybe you have not, but I have, where they'll turn off the light for a second just so you can see what true black light is. And I know in these mines we had many men down in these coal mines, and, and they had the, I guess that they used started out with candles. I don't know. And then they got some headlamps. I wasn't here. I don't know. But I know that they were happy to have light when they went down in those gold mines because it gets dark. And just one little candle can push back the darkness. Do you ever feel like Christmas is a whole lot of promises without a whole lot of love and hope and joy and peace? Have we had those years in our life where Christmas just wasn't everything that we had hoped for? Well, as I said, today is Christmas Eve. And if you're like most people, well, I should say me. I can't speak for everybody else. You've been running full throttle all month. Ever since Black Friday Eve, what we used to call Thanksgiving, you have been shopping and you've been sending cards and wrapping gifts and baking cookies and shopping some more. And now you got 14 people coming to your house tomorrow to eat and you're just hoping that you don't burn the biscuits again. Guilty. You've had too much sugar. The dog has gotten into the Christmas fudge and made tracks all over the carpet that you just had cleaned for Christmas. And the children, for me, it's the grandchildren, are just begging to please let me open just one present before Christmas because they're losing their minds. This is not the Christmas promise that I learned about as a child. As a child, I can remember being innocent like Ellie Jo and, and Easton, but Easton's starting to get a little more mature. I can remember that innocence of being six years old and everything was magical. I mean, do, do, do we all remember, just at least at Christmas time, it was a little magical? And, and, and I have to admit, now as an adult, my mama and daddy made it look so easy. <laughs> I don't know how they did it. I remember what I know now as the first Sunday of Advent, either the last Sunday in November or the first Sunday in December. I didn't keep up with that when I was six years old. I just knew that Sunday was coming after Thanksgiving and we were going to all load up in the car. And when I say load up in a car, my grandma had a 1950 uh, DeSoto, and we could pile 13 people in that car. Now, that was pre-seatbelt law days, but we were stacked in there like sardines because we would just get in the car, and Granny would stop every, just about at every house between our home and church. And, and we'd get to the church, and, and all the adults had it so nice. And, and we would, you remember cutting out the car? cardboard trees and cardboard angels and making those red and green links out of cardboard to decorate
decorate the Christmas tree with in your Sunday school room on the saddest Christmas cedar trees you ever did see because somebody had gone out into the woods and had cut down a, a cedar tree for every child's Sunday school class. I, I never knew who those magical men were, but as an adult now, I've got a pretty good idea. But then after we did our crafts and decorated the trees, we would get a snack and then we go into the sanctuary and the preacher had something to say. I'm not sure I paid a whole lot of attention. And then we'd go and start practicing for the Christmas play. That was Christmas for me. And it was magical. I remember my mama making, because she loved to sew, this was a joy for her, making most of the costumes for everybody to wear. I remember a lot of joy at that church. The adults might not have felt that way. Now as an adult looking at what we did, they might not have enjoyed it as much as we did. But I remember a lot of joy and a lot of love. And because everybody at church was just so nice. I mean, as a child, was anybody not nice to you at church? Everybody was so nice, and nobody yelled at you when you did something you weren't supposed to do. And nobody ever told you to go out behind the church and get a switch. I just loved being at church, because it was just a place where I felt loved and safe. And, and, and I'm sad that there are are children that don't have that, that don't have someone taking them to that safe place. But anyway, that was then, and I'm glad I have those happy memories, and this is now, and I'm all grown up, and, and Christmas is just not quite as magical as it was in 1965. Somewhere between then and now, I had many, many moments of losing sight of the reason for the season, the babe in the manger. I sang about him every week, but somewhere there were times I just kind of lost sight of that. Because as, as a teenager, I was more, more um, concerned about what my boyfriend might be getting me for Christmas than I was about decorating the church for Christmas. The, things change through our lives, and I just thank God he brought me back to sane reality of it's all about me, Beverly. It is not about you. It's not about the church. It's not about the tree. It's not about that boyfriend. It's not about your husband or your children. It's all about me. And that's why our, our Christ candle is in the center of the Advent candle. Because it's all about Him. And I just think... As an adult, if my mama could work full time and my daddy could hold down three jobs and they still had time to build a nativity set and sew on angel wings and shepherd robes just because they loved us and they loved Jesus. I think of those t years that I kind of didn't put Jesus first. I think, how could I forget? I had a mom and daddy showing me. I had a grandma that made sure I got there. How could I forget some of those Christmases and make it about everything but Jesus? How did I forget how much love it took for this baby to shed his royal robes and leave his father's side and come down to earth and be born in a barn? Have we moved so far from the promise that God made to us and the promise that God kept to us? Remember the words of John, the most important words, not Christmas words. These are words for life, words for every day. Remember the promise that God told us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but will have eternal life. These are the most important words to a Christian. Because if we don't believe in this, we, we, we are lost. If, if, if we can't claim this, 
This is the beginning. This is where we have to start. A promise was made, and a promise was kept. God promised the people of Jerusalem through Isaiah that God would not abandon them. Yes, they were going to suffer for a while, and you can go back to Isaiah 7 and read all that. And they would suffer for a while, but eventually God was going to bring them a Messiah. And a Messiah, you have to understand what a Messiah was, and this is what the people were looking for. A Messiah is the anointed one, a man who would be ruler over Israel, who would lead the people into a time of peace and get them out from under the rule of those that were persecuting them. He would be a great king, and they would call him Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 7, 14, he says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look at the young woman who is with child, and she is going to bear a son, and his name will be Emmanuel. And I think it's important that, that Isaiah used that word Emmanuel instead of Jesus. I'm sure that he knew Jesus would be the name because God was telling him everything. But he used Emmanuel because that means God with us. And that was God's promise, that he loved us so much that he would always be with us. So we call him Emmanuel. 700 years after the prophet Isaiah wrote these words, a little nobody carpenter named Joseph from Nazareth, he had a dream. No, not a Martin Luther King dream, but he had a dream. And in that dream, an angel told him about his fiancée Mary. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. Friends, that is the promise. It was the love for us and all that came before and all that's going to come after us is why God kept that promise. That's why we have the love candle. The same reason why my mama stayed up all night long sewing for us kids, because she loved us. But ask Ellie Jo, Jesus loves us more. She'll be real quick to tell you. I am so grateful that we take this time at the end of the fiscal year, or whatever, just the end of the year, fiscal finances, right? Forget that. Just the end of the year. But we take these last four Sundays at the end of the year, which is the beginning of our Christian year, and we set this time apart to remind ourselves with this beautiful wreath of candles and with the scriptures and with the songs and with, with the prayers of what this time of Advent is all about. This Advent season reminds us of the gifts that Jesus brought to us from heaven, the kind of love and joy and peace and uh, uh, love that, that he, he brought was not the kind of joy, hope, peace, and love that we had here on earth before he came. The kind he brought is different. It's deeper. And it's, as I said, it's the realest of the real. This fourth candle, love, is my favorite. I think that this candle makes all the other three candles possible. Because when you think about it, there is no way that we can have true hope or peace or joy without the love of God through the Son of Jesus Christ who lives in our hearts. And so we continue to tell this great love story. We love to attend Christmas pageants. We love to hear the singing or talking Christmas tree. We love to attend candlelight services like we're going to have tonight. And I personally just love to hear and sing the Hallelujah Chorus. There's so many beautiful things this season. The live nativity scenes that you can find in, in just about anywhere within five miles of you. There's so many beautiful events to remind us of the reason for the season. How could this girl who hardly ever missed a Sunday at church ever not have that first on her mind? 
I ask myself that often. I'm just, as I said, thankful that God loves me even though. And he brought me this far. The love story of Mary and Joseph. The story of the shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. And the angels' good news of great joy. And a newborn child wrapped in bands of cloth lying in a manger. It's a love story that we sing about and talk about, portray in manger scenes, and read to our children and grandchildren. It's the greatest love story ever told. But sometimes, sometimes we try to make it beautiful. We forget that His love was sent to a messy, messy world. And in, he, it was sent in a messy relationship. And it had more questions than they did answers. I cannot imagine the questions that Mary and Joseph must have had. And I can't imagine being Joseph and, and, and just wondering, how could this happen to me? That's messy. It was in a messy barn with messy animals standing all around. But God kept his Christmas promise of love. The promise is that God is with us in real life. Joseph bore the shame of his fiance getting pregnant before they married. Mary screamed in labor. She had to. No woman can have a baby without screaming and hurting. Jesus was poor and the manger was surrounded by sheep and cattle and all of their manure. It was raw and it was real. And it's exactly how our lives are. The Christmas promise is a forever love. It is that with God, with us, we're going to be right just where we are. I heard a story that maybe can explain this whole Jesus coming down from heaven to save us and why he had to do it the way he did it. And, and I just want to share that with y'all this morning in closing on Christmas Eve. And maybe you can share it with, with a friend later on. But one Christmas, there was a family, and this is a true story, preparing for Christmas Eve. And, and everybody was getting their, you know, most beautiful Christmas frocks on. And, and the wife was, you know, dressed to the nines, as we say. And, and the husband just never really understood the reason for the season, as we say. And he never attended worship with his family. And he especially wasn't going to give up his Christmas Eve to go to church. And every year his wife would gather the children, get them clean, get them dressed, get them fed, and take them to the candlelight service on December 24th. But the husband never attended with her. And this particular year, after the, his family, he'd watched them off. He told her to take the good car because it might snow. And he sat down and, and he, he fixed himself a cup of tea. He was just in his little cozy corner, quiet. The children were all gone and he's just enjoying his time. And he, he sat by this big picture window. It used to be real popular in the 70s. And, and he settled himself down there where he could read and look out the window and, and feel the fire near him. And there was a weird storm that was blowing up. And he was, as he saw it coming, he was thankful that he had insisted she take the better car. And so he just sat there, and every once in a while he'd hear a little tapping on the window. And, and he would look out, and he didn't see anything or anybody. But he would hear this little knock or a little thud every once in a while. So he put his reading down and he looked out. And he realized that it was some little birds that kept hitting his window. Well, 
he he watched for a few minutes and, and, and he realized that they were caught up in this storm because it was not just snowing, but it was windy. It was it was one of those those storms that you do not want to be out in. And, and, and they kept flying into this window, he thinks, in a real vain attempt to get in away from the storm. And the longer he sat there and watched this happen, the more he, he thought, I've got to do something. <laughs> These little birds are going to knock themselves out and freeze to death. So he, he watched them hit the window, fall down, and kind of get it together, and they'd try to get up again, and the wind would just blow them again. So he, 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 he watched, wondering why are they not going somewhere, like up in a tree, somewhere safe. And then he thought about that old barn that was out in the back of his yard. And it was really bothering him watching these birds just flying around and getting nowhere but bumped in the head. And the barn was not in great condition, and of course it didn't have a heater, but the lights worked, and, and the wooden walls would provide a little bit of, of protection from, from the winds that, that was blowing the birds around. So he decided if he could just get those birds in that barn, that they would survive this storm tonight. So he bundled himself up and, and headed out, and, and he was really fighting those gusts of wind, and he went out the back door, and he, he tried to shoot the birds into the barn and they weren't having anything to do with that <clears throat> and and he turned the light on so they could see it but they didn't really notice the light either they kept going to the window so then he now this is becoming a mission for him he is fixated on getting these birds to safety so he tried to shoo the birds in and all that did was just scatter them around even more and then he went in the house and got some bread and tried to drop bread crumbs from the window to the barn, but the wind was blowing so hard it blew them away as soon as he dropped them down, so that didn't work. And then he went into the barn and he got some seed, and he said, this will do it. And he put some, some grain seed out by the door of the barn. He figured if he could get them that close, then they would see you know, a refuge and they would go on in. So he put, he put the, the, the grain down, but it was snowing so hard that the snow covered the grain up before the birds could find it. And finally, the man was just, this is just a head scratcher for him, but he still wanted to get those birds in that barn to safety. And he started moaning and talking out loud. And he said, you know, if I could just be a bird for a minute, if I was just one of those little birds, I could get them in that barn. I could lead them to a safe place if I was one of them. And while he's having this thought, the service at church ended and the bells started ringing. And he knew that service was over and the family would be home soon. But he also connected some dots between that thought in his head of becoming a bird and the bells ringing at church. And then he understood what his wife and his children had been talking about, that Jesus had to become one of us in order to save us because he had to understand our pain. He had to understand our confusion. The only way Jesus could get us to stop bumping our heads on the window was to come down here and walk among us. He tried, God tried really hard to save us with laws, with priests. He sent prophets. The people that he created, think about the Old Testament. How many times did they just scatter around like those birds that he was trying to get into the barn? Finally, God became one of us. He became one of us in the name of Jesus to lead his creation to the safety of the barn. And I think that's just a perfect story since we always claim that Jesus was born in a barn. And he was. It's just not a barn like what was in this guy's backyard. His barn was more of a rock. But baby Jesus, he grew up to be a man. And he showed us the ways of God. And then he died for us to, so that we could conquer death. And just before he left us, 
he left us with another promise. He says, I will be with you always because I love you. And I am going to leave you now, but I'll be back. So stop running into the windows. When God makes a promise, he doesn't hold back. He always comes through. Emmanuel was not just a baby in the manger. Through the Holy Spirit of God, we have Emmanuel with us always. God is with us. Amen? Amen. If you would stand and let us sing this sweet song, 249. And remember that Emmanuel is always, always with us.